food addiction, guilt, and negative energies. Well, there is actually, I mean, it's an interesting question. Um, everyone has guilt by not being true to the spirit. Uh, a lot of it's unconscious. You're not aware of it. And there's levels of guilt. Um, now, indulging the seven deadly sins, like food addiction, gluttony, uh, is uh, a major, uh, will cause major guilt because it's anti-life. Um, as you as you evolve into the more spiritual fields, uh, up the levels of consciousness, um, uh, you realize that what was tying you down partly to the lower fields was the unconscious guilt of not being who you're meant to be in this world, which is the, your infinite nature. Uh, and actually, you see on the grosser levels, I mean, this is seen quite well in 12-step groups who do inventory. You see, if you spend your whole life uh, eating food till you're obese and killing yourself and distressing everyone and being a waste of space for your whole life, of course you're going to have guilt. Uh, it's, it's a waste of life. Uh, God gave you the gift of life. And the highest expression of life, of course, is the avatars and the saints. Um uh, just to be a, a normal person and not harm anyone is pretty good. Uh, you know, to, to be an addict, being selfish and self-absorbed, or to wallow in addictions and waste your life indulging, uh, self-indulgence, of course that brings up huge amounts of guilt, unconscious guilt, because you don't feel the guilt, because you're, you know, you're eating too many donuts, <laughs> eating too many donuts to feel the guilt. But if you stopped eating the donuts, you'd feel the guilt, you see, because you go, well, I just wasted my whole life and was a made everyone a misery just eating donuts. So as you um, as you evolve spiritually, you realize that there's layers of guilt. Mm. You realize that uh, to grossly waste your life in resentments, in uh, glut gluttony or whatever, uh, would create a lot of unconscious guilt and a lot of self-destructive behavior because it's anti-life. Um, but even as you go up the higher levels, you realize that you had some guilt. If I could be, um, if I could be a saint, and that's my potential to be a saint, and not to actualize that, then I'd have guilt. You know, like you, you. Um, uh, I realized as a, you know. Mm, I guess I call it a near-death spiritual experience with the kidney failure in the Royal Free Hospital. You do get uh, a moral inventory of your life. It runs before your eyes. Like, this is what you did with your life. It's like uh, a bit like God saying, I gave you these years, and what do you do with them? Have a have a little rerun. Uh, was it, did you get full marks, or was it, were you, it was, I mean, it was awful. I was, a, I was a mad addict for 30 years, so it was pretty horrific. Now, if it's like, well, you've helped hundreds of people recover from addiction, um, you are a, a light, an illumination, a channel of non-dual love, uh, you know, then that's pretty, pretty like you fulfilled your, um, your spiritual potential. So you probably have very little guilt. Uh, you know, you'd, you'd say, well, you you maximized your spiritual potential. So, um, so food addiction is, I mean, a gross food addiction, or just even just spending your life just wallowing in. Uh, I, I, I had it was hilarious. I had one of the people I was mentoring in the food food addiction uh, fellowships. You know, it was, it's hilarious. Every addiction. I mean, I've, I've mentored people in several different addictions, but it was hilarious. I walked out with this person. It was a place in central London, and he was a connoisseur of all the restaurants. It was, and he was saying, "Well, you know, the, the burgers at this place, you know, it's quite highly, it's got awards." And he was going through all the different types of foods and all the, all the amazing tastes and how he was a connoisseur of all the different. I mean, it was like it was like, you know, I mean, I mean, it's interesting. I mean, I'm a food. I mean, I'm a slightly different type of food addict. I'm not a connoisseur food addict. More, more as just a binge on any food, but um, cheap and cheerful. But uh, he, he was more of a connoisseur. But um, yeah, so I mean, it's a bit, you know, it's like, okay, you know, you sort of leave the body and it's like, what did you do with your life? Well, I, I, I'm an expert in every single restaurant in London and what the food, 
<laughs> I mean, it's okay. I guess I guess it's useful, maybe. <laughs> I mean, it was interesting to listen to, but I mean, I wouldn't spend my whole life doing it. So, um, okay, uh, food addiction. Oh, the guilt, yes. The temptations. Well, that's true. I usually don't talk about this, but yes, it is true. The negative energies uh, are able to sense um, your weaknesses, your karmic weaknesses, and they go for them. Um, and I will do videos, especially if you're an advanced student or a spiritual teacher. Um, you have to be extremely careful because, um, yeah, I'll talk about that in another video. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, it, usually if you're uh, just an average spiritual student, don't need to worry about the negative energies so much. They they won't bother you that much. So anyway, when you become very advanced or a spiritual teacher, uh, that you need to be more concerned about the negative energies. Um, but they do, uh, they do see where your weaknesses are and go for them. And they will, um, especially if you're giving up prediction, actually, funny enough, I, as I've shared in another video, I saw that with people I was helping. They, they would be set up with circumstances. Um, you know, men who are trying to escape destructive relationships. You know, as soon as they tried to let go, these women knew where they were going to be and how to go for the jugular to pull them back into addiction. And uh, it was like, uh, and I could see there was something more, um, what should I say? There, there were more of a sinister uh, orchestration at play to pull them off, uh, you know, now that they'd committed to the spiritual alignment there were forces at play to make sure they fell back. Uh, and I could sort of see that. It was very, very clear. Um, so, um, yeah, that's true. So if you're getting off addiction, stick close to your sponsor and the fellowship uh, because um, uh, coming off addiction, it can be a life and death thing. And, you know, you go from being like a, you know, uh, a, a total addict to being a saint in a few days so yeah, certain energies and fields don't like it really if you try and do that okay uh okay um and um yeah so if you are an advanced student uh negative well uh, okay so if you're an advanced student and you're trying to uh, get to enlightenment and you're giving it 100%, um, then yes, you will have to worry about the negative energies uh, because they will take note of you and uh, they will try to derail. Anyone who wants to make very advanced spiritual progress uh, needs to be on extreme guard. Um, so, and, uh, so you are vigilant that you are now uh, advanced students and spiritual teachers need to be extremely vigilant at all times. Um, and how, so what does that mean? Um, like, let's say, uh, let's say the energies know that your temptation is food. Um, they will orchestrate uh, circumstances to tempt you with food. Um, and, uh, yeah, that did happen in the early days of my food recovery. Um, so uh, they do it through very advanced mechanisms, uh, which I won't, uh, may not go. But um, you'll be set up with, with situations uh, to tempt you with food uh, and to uh, uh, especially avoid all negative people, places and situations. If, uh, for example, some friends you know who are maybe a little bit below integrity, suddenly invite you out, say no. Um, if you suddenly feel like going to locations, you think, oh, well, why don't I go to that location? But that location, uh, you're not clear, has lots of restaurants and food joints that you normally like to go. You're not sure why you want to walk around there. Well, don't go. Be a bit more conscious. Um, you know, if you're in the supermarket, um stay away from the aisles where you know the tempting foods are um and avoid all negative people because you know they they may be used to tempt you you know also avoid negative people in general because they'll just they may aggressively attack you so you feel disconnected and then suddenly go for food whatever your addiction is so um 
you protect yourself. Uh, I like there what Hawkins said, seek only holy company. But if you're an advanced student or a teacher, you should do that aggressively at all times. Never, never, um, as Hawkins said, you know, these energies have had thousands and thousands and thousands of years of experience at, uh, at temptation and evolving their arts. So don't don't think, never think, even if you're an advanced spiritual teacher or an advanced student, never be cocky and arrogant. Always be 100% um, aligned with divinity. Uh, and uh, don't be arrogant and be on your guard and increase your... Um, yeah, just increase your alignment with the spiritual fields at all times. I wanted, uh, I will do some more videos on this, but I actually run out of time, actually, I think today. I want to do, I did want to do, remind me next next week if I get time. I want to do one on a video on um, uh, entrainment, and entrainment and negative entrainment to silent fields. Uh, yeah, I, do, I wanted to do that but today, but I haven't got time, so I'll stop there. Stop.